so while I was uh, getting ready for something I want to do in today's video, um, I needed some rails. So I came down to my mine shaft here, and I was slowly picking them away when I noticed that I had some iron ores here next to this block here. This block is called Tough. But one of the things that's been updated fairly recently in Minecraft is ore veins. And what will happen is certain ores tend to generate next to veins of different blocks. In the case of iron, it's tough. And, uh, you know, I was kind of coming through here. And I'll show you. I've already got almost two stacks of iron. Actually, I think I'm over two stacks. Yeah, a little over two stacks of iron um, from kind of going through this vein already. But I started to excavate it thinking, you know... Maybe this is something that some of y'all would find beneficial, but as I go through here, you can see that there's just iron all over the place, and it's stretched through this whole little area here. Um, I've excavated down to here. It actually spawns with the occasional raw iron block, which is nine of these ores um, together in the same place. So I've gotten easily, you know probably three stacks of iron out of this place and i haven't even fully like excavated through it i'm not sure this kind of seems like i might have hit a wall of just tough now um i have been poking around a little and it i'm not seeing the same kind of iron ore popping up in it like i was but it's kind of a neat thing and if you don't know it exists you wouldn't even know to poke around and keep looking but if you uh, are in need of iron and you're down mining, you find some of it with this tough, it's definitely worth digging around a few blocks uh, to try and get yourself a little more. Anyway, I'm going to collect this up and the rails that I came for, and we will get chugging along with what we got planned for today. Well, hello there, and welcome back to my beginner series. As always, I'm your host, Sin Skillet. And don't mind me, I'm just, you know, hanging out with a pillager here. Uh, I managed to capture a pillager captain. And I have investigated, and I have interrogated, and asked him the questions. And I have uncovered a nefarious plot. The pillagers are starting to send hit squads after Mr. Fisher. They have found out that he is on a quest to cure the zombies. Yes, that is right. They want to stop him. What they don't know is Mr. Fisher has a secret weapon, and that's me. Um, but in all seriousness, I'm hitting out with this pillager. Something interesting you might not know about them um, is that once they're in a boat with you, they can't actually shoot you. Now let's pull forward just a little bit here. You'll see that all of his arrows are just falling into the ground right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is actually very valuable for us. Pillagers have a couple of big uses, if you know how to use them. Um, I'm going to ultimately use this guy to power our iron farm here a little ways down the road, because you can never have enough iron, uh, especially after what we're going to get into today. I don't know how expensive it's all going to be, because I haven't actually done any of it yet, I haven't done any math, because, you know... Math is lame, um, but we're going to be needing hoppers and pistons and some of your stuff that requires uh, a little bit more of that iron than we've been using up to this point. But anyway, I'm going to sit here. Um, once Mr. Pillager has fired off all of his arrows, um, <clears throat> his crossbow will break and we'll be able to... Be around him safely without worrying because he won't be able to attack us um but i'm gonna hang out here for a little while completely pacify the pillager and then we will get to it with building up some automated farms so today we are focusing on bone meal because we want those bone blocks so that we can make things look just a bit better. So to start off, we're going to go with one of the simplest options. Now, we had previously set up this little manual wheat farm, 
which is perfectly adequate for feeding the cows, all kinds of things. It's also adequate for something else. And to set this up, I'm actually going to make ourselves a little room uh, right there next to the storage I've got for this. Now, what I've got going on here is I've been storing my wheat as I've been harvesting it. Um, had a bunch of other vegetables that we'll get to later and whatnot. Um, carrots and potatoes actually also work the same way where you will get more of them than you planted. All right, but for the starters, what I'm concerned about is the seeds. You can see I've got a lot of extra wheat seeds. I'm never going to use them for anything other than this. All right, so I want to turn those seeds into bone meal. And the way I can do that is I need a bone meal collection chest along with a hopper. Okay, and then I need my composter. Now, on top of my composter, you have to shift and click, and it will put your uh, composter into, or your hopper pointing into your composter. And do I have enough wood on me? I thought I brought a, another chest. Hold on. I've got a little staging set up here for the bigger projects we're going to do today. Let's just bring our chest with us. We're going to need a lot of these today. And I've pre-crafted up some of this stuff. Um, some of it I'm going to be crafting as I need it because it's still expensive and I don't want a bunch of extra. Okay, now jump, shift, click. There we go. So what I can do now is I can come in and grab a whole bunch of my wheat seeds. And uh, you saw me grab a bunch at the same time. If you grab something, hold shift and double click, It'll put everything in there. Now, as you can see, this is now feeding our composter. And once it fills up to a certain level, it will then get pulled out. Let's see, is it full? There it is. There it is full. And now we've got ourselves a little bone meal. Now, this isn't super efficient. And I wouldn't be doing this at all if I didn't already have a whole bunch of resources to throw at it. Because um, there's definitely faster ways to do this um but now when i plant my wheat i'll get enough seeds and yeah we'll leave a stack here just in case something happens um but i'll get just enough seeds to replant all of this like three or four times over something like that um so now we've got our bone meal coming through uh let's give it just a moment once we have four more um, then we can start working on that. Now, this will work for a few things, and I'm going to use it for several of them. Uh, one of them, when you cut trees down, they do drop saplings. And as they drop saplings, most of your trees will drop more saplings than trees you cut down. Which is good, because then you can start adding more trees, collecting wood faster, and all of that. But once you get to a certain point, it becomes pointless. So you can actually compost those saplings. Um, if you have uh, something with silk touch, you can also harvest the leaves and compost the leaves. There we go. All right, nine bone meal. That's what we need. And we got a crafting table right here. So, boom, we have now crafted and manufactured our first bone block well on our way to getting what we need for everything long term. But this is going to be your simplest way. Like I said, um, it'll work with like vines, carrots, potatoes, bamboo, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so if you're curious if it'll compost, you can literally just right click on a composter with it in your hand. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, you'll have to find something else that you can compost. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and let this run off onto the side. And we're going to hop over there after I collect a few more items to get started. And we're going to build ourselves some automatic farms. Continuing on with our semi-automatic day and our quest for bone meal. This one's actually a little bit of a sidestep. Um, long term, it can get you bone meal. Um, by dropping saplings and things like that um, from your trees as they grow. But this is a really good day one build for a lot of people. In fact, all of the resources that went into this 
uh, I actually collected as I cleared out this land right here. Um, there was a little bit of a hill here, if you remember from previous episodes. Had some trees on it, so I cut them down, leveled this out, so I've got a little room to put a few other things, um, which we're going to do farming-wise. Um, but not, for the most part, the stuff today. I don't like that floating. Okay. But anyway, the theory here is actually pretty simple. You can plant your trees, and some of them, um, spruce, jungle, and dark oak, you can plant in batches of four like this, and they grow bigger trees. Um, once they grow, then you can uh, get up to them, climb them, all of that, <clears throat> and chop them down. All right, and actually, one slight improvement as I'm thinking about it. Um, one of the difficulties of this particular farm setup is water flows. So you have to be able to get in here. You uh, mine slower when you're in water, so this original little bit. But by putting those on, I can climb up once I'm in here. Um, I'm moving through the water fairly quick. I've got Depth Strider on my boots right now which allows me to move through the water faster. Um, so this can be a little bit of a pain. Early game with the water streams getting back out, you gotta slowly trudge along. Um, but anyway, when the, you cut your tree down, the leaves decompose and they drop saplings and stuff. Those saplings, for the most part, and most trees with this size and design, um, should end up falling into your water streams, which then I have coming underneath here to a pair of hoppers going into this chest and this chest will end up collecting those saplings for us uh, so real simple design um, you can turn some of them into bone meal to grow these faster or um, you know collecting bone meal like we're going to be doing in larger quantities up oh, there's our tree and as you can see um, this one grew the way that i expected everything's above my water streams and they'll come down. Um, if you want to make this design yourself, it's pretty standard. Um, from corner to corner, it's 14 by 14. There's a water stream in each corner. And once you place those water streams, this area I dug out right here that's a little bit of a cross will be dry <coughs> um, up to this area here. These two I dug out. So I place my water streams down. Then I dug these out, which drops my water down and into this. I left this one up higher the way it starts off because it'll push everything down right in here and with that the water streams will come down underneath my tree underneath the ground right to here. So it's real quick it's simple. Uh, the composters I used here are purely decorational since we're on uh, bone meal day um, so you don't actually have to worry about those. Um, any block will do as long as it holds your water streams in place. But now that we've got our tree farming on another level, we can continue on on our quest for bone blocks. As I'm collecting some materials so that I can build the farms I want to build today, um, <clears throat> I thought it was worth showing you a little bit of what I'm doing to collect them. As I've mentioned previously, I was really excited when I found out that I probably have a slime chunk down here. Um, and it's possible there could be more than one, but knowing where they are uh, takes a little bit of work. Um, there are applications out there where I could honestly just look it up and say, okay, this is my slime chunk, this is what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm choosing not to do that. Um, instead, I'm going around, I'm lighting up my caves, as you can see. Um, for a good distance and I'm looking in certain areas as you can see I've kind of squared this out and the reason I picked it um, if you push F3 and G in your game it will bring up your chunk borders okay so you can see that I've excavated a three tall area in this chunk um, this area is already mostly open so I've left it alone for the time being um, this one is a little full up right now so I'm probably gonna have to excavate that and this but <clears throat> what I'm doing also building some platforms with some of the resources I've mined out um, to give myself more flat areas but I'm increasing 
the spawn area where slime can pop in if they are in fact in the area um and as you can see we still get the occasional zombie skeleton whatever in here because i haven't really properly fully lit everything up yet um but slime are hostile mobs so they have a greater chance of spawning um if you don't have a lot of hostile mobs around so anyway i'm gonna keep collecting some slime i do need a little bit where are all these guys coming from weird i guess that's not lit up very well okay um so they're part of the hostile mobs and you can only have so many hostile mobs in your world at the exact same time um so as long as there's other stuff spawning the chances of me getting the slime i want are a lot lower um which ultimately means that it's kind of slow going uh, long story short, I probably should have built a slime farm before I started doing what I'm doing today. But those take a lot of time, and I don't want to put in the effort at this ooh, diamonds um, at this moment for that. So is what it is. Uh, but I'm going to keep collecting up that slime so that we can build some of these other farms that I want, and we can keep on progressing in our world towards the goal of having unlimited bone blocks I just saw one of them spawn in in this area as I've been working on getting everything so I know for a fact this chunk right here is a winner and that's actually fantastic um way up there is how high this cave area goes and it actually let's see if I can get a view of it over here goes a good bit lower up. there's some water in the area which i'll have to clear out um well i don't necessarily have to it depends on how big i want to make my slime chunk but that i'm pretty sure goes all the way up past level 40 probably and slime can spawn anywhere as long as it's below level 40. um let's see let's mark this with our tree here so that i can remember which one this is um but i've seen spawns for slime before in this general area um this area didn't have any place for them to spawn though as you can see i've actually literally built the floor here so i accidentally discovered an additional slime chunk on top of the one i already know is somewhere right there so i've potentially got um, a multi slime chunk area where that's not super uncommon um, but yeah, now I know where this is so I can set things up a little bit better to get these guys but I'm gonna keep collecting that slime now and the next thing that you should be seeing is where we're going to set up some of our farms and how we're going to do it so that we can keep collecting uh, bone meal in order to get all of those glorious, glorious bone blocks that I am so desperately in, well, honestly, just desire of. It has nothing to do with need. Oh, and neat tip, uh, that's our zombie spawner right there. <laughs> so we can AFK both of these at the same time. Okay, I'm over here in a creative world right now. Um, just going to show you a concept. I can't get enough slime uh, to do everything I want. We're going to build everything to scale like we have the slime, but it's not going to be able to collect all the way yet. But what we're going to use to harvest um, our sugar cane and our bamboo is a flying machine. Okay, and right now I've got it docked at its station. And let's just go ahead, flip the switch, turn it on, and it should fly away. There we go. And it's going to fly away. Um, it's a little bit noisy, which is why I have an off switch. But it comes here, and then it's going to fly back. Now, the way that this works is uh, slightly brilliant, slightly insane. But <laughs> basically, these observers send a signal when something updates 
um, which fires a redstone signal into the slime box that are right under them, and it causes a change in an update. Now, this docking station, since there's power on it, um, <clears throat> it keeps this piston down here extended when it comes up to it. So I don't need an unmovable block, such as obsidian, furnaces, anything like that, to um, make this thing function. Um, however, if it wasn't for this trap door here, which this observer here sees when it gets back and sees something new, so then it kicks the circuit in reverse and causes it to turn back this way. If it wasn't for that, then this flying machine could potentially keep flying this way. Now, I have these wings long enough that that wouldn't happen. Um, the flying machine would get too heavy and it wouldn't be able to go. But as soon as I flip this switch, this piston will come back and this trap door will drop down. And this guy will see the update and send everything back off in that direction. So this is probably the simplest return station that I know of. Um, I've used other ones in the past that had unmovable blocks. I couldn't actually find any of the tutorials for them, so I just kind of sat here for a moment and was like, well, sort of how did it work? And this is what I came up with. Um, <clears throat> I know that this is not what I've used in the past, but it seems to be working. So I figured uh, showcasing it to you would be something worth having. Um, but with that, I am going to build out the farms wide enough that I can utilize most of this. Um, one thing to keep in mind for building designs is these guys will stick to other blocks. So if you plan to bring this right up to the edge of your building, um, you're going to have to pick one of the blocks for it to dock against that does not interact with slime blocks. Off the top of my head, that's just glazed terracotta and leaf blocks uh, that you can use for that. I'm sure there's other things. I just don't know what they are. Um, but long term, I'm going to get myself some glazed terracotta for the design I want on the building anyway. So it's going to work out really well for this guy. But anyway, with that, let's crack back into our survival world. And we will get cracking on this. All right, I'm back at the top of our mountain on our survival world here. And we're going to get cracking away on this build. Um, in here, like I've said before, we're going to do melons, we're going to do pumpkins, sugar cane, and bamboo all in the same build. Uh, the bamboo and the sugarcane, for the moment, are going to be a little bit lackluster. Um, but <clears throat> that's okay. Uh, I kind of knew that that was going to be probably a thing anyway, because slime without a farm is a bit difficult. Um, I did manage to wrangle us up 28 balls, um, which will get us started. But because of that, I'm actually going to focus on the pumpkins and the melons. And because of the way I'm building this, it's going to be stacked. Pumpkins and melons are going to be low. Next layer up, I'm going to do my sugar cane. And then I'm going to do my bamboo at the top. And the reason I'm building it in that particular order, uh, the pumpkin and the melons um, only need a little bit of space to grow. And they're going to be quick. They're going to be easy. Your sugar cane is your next tallest thing. Uh, it can grow a total of three high. And then our bamboo will grow like stupid tall. Um, but anyway, we want to get cracking on this regardless. Now, for where I want to put it, I actually want it over pretty close to the edge of my mountain right here. You can see my sheep and my cows are just over there, along with our pillager assassin. Um, so this is kind of generally the area I want to put it. So I just want to start outlining it, right? So I'm going to come up. And once again, this is going to be a temporary floating building until I landscape. Um, and to do that, I just need to go collect a whole bunch of dirt, some sand, gravel, things like that. Um, so resource collection just hasn't been a high priority on those yet, which is why I haven't gotten to it. But the flying machine itself is 20 blocks wide. 
So my wall is going to be separate. Um, and with the design I have in mind, oh, let's be honest, it's always subject to change. Um, I should be able to put the flying machine right up to the wall. So I'm only going to build a floor that's 20 wide. And I'm going to use these polished uh, deep slate bricks. To get them, you just get your cobbled deep slate. You combine it on your crafting window right here into four. And then you combine those into four more. So it'll give you a polished deep slate and then your deep slate bricks. So let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so we got 20 wide. So you can tell that's a pretty big area um, already by itself. And the reason I'm going to use flying machines is because I don't want it to be a giant wall. I want it to be a tall, wide, beefy, industrial-looking building. So this is actually going to go out... Um, I'm going to do 30 blocks out that way, and um, then I'm going to put a collection system in, which is going to be based off of here, and uh, from there, then I'll start building up with the various farms, but as the sun's setting, I'm going to go ahead and run off, oh wait, no, I set a bed up right here, uh, going to sleep. But I'm still going to hop off camera here. I'm going to get this whole area uh, platformed out. Um, you know, 20 by 30 area, that's already 600 blocks by itself straight up. So it's going to take me a few minutes. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get the collection system put together as well while I do this. And I'll show it all to you here in just a moment. All right, I'm bringing you in pretty close to the end, but kind of mid-process here. But I'm going to show you what I'm thinking for this collection system. So I've got this giant minecart assortment, or uh, mine <laughs> rail assortment here. And you'll see I don't have any powered rails in here yet. I'm actually about to test to figure out where I need to place my rails. But it's going to make a giant loop, and it's going to come back to right here where it's going to stop and we'll have a minecart with a hopper. Um, I've got a powered rail here and when you've got a powered rail, if you turn it on, it'll launch things when they're right on a block. Okay, so I know that I need some powered rail action right here. Now, one of the things um, that I can do to save myself on some resources instead of putting redstone blocks underneath like a lot of people would and i can probably afford what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to make myself oh i've already got a lot of sticks in my inventory some switches all right and uh, i'm going to her levers i guess rather and what i'm going to do is i'm going to find where my powered rails are so i think i just put one right here if i remember right so now that i've got that on okay yeah i've got a powered rail that's on okay so we can go back and yep we take off again and we're right there so let's go ahead and put our powered rail in here now i'm going to go around i'm going to finish this process um and that will mostly be our collection system sorted other than our storage. Oh, look at me getting myself collected here. Um, so this is going to be the basis for my collection system. Um, it takes a little while to loop around, but it is short enough I don't have to worry about despawn. Now what I don't know right now, because I've never actually built a melon or pumpkin farm anywhere near this big, is if I'm going to have enough capacity in my minecart with hopper to be able to collect all of the drops. Okay, and if I can't, so that'll be a little bit of a problem. Now I can solve it two different ways. One, I can 
add another minecart or two, three, whatever is applicable here. Or I can actually change the ends where I've got this back and forth loop, and I can just put little minecart launchers on each of these individual rails. And that's going to give us the ability to just put a minecart on each run back and forth, and that will definitely, without fail, handle the capacity of what this is going to produce. But anyway, going through, uh, just testing the system, honestly, to make sure that I counted right. You'll see at the end, which I'm coming up to right here, I put a few more hoppers in place, and, or not hoppers, powered rails, to make sure that I had enough oomph to get across the hoppers at the end there, which are going to collect our items for us. So with that, I'll hop out. I'll show you where our collection system is going to go for our items. Uh, that way, we can collect what we're going to produce. Now, we've discussed this is going to be for bone meal. Um, so all of the things are going to come into these hoppers, into this hopper here. And it's going to feed across into some chests. And we're going to, underneath the, or well, not directly chests, but underneath those hoppers, we're going to set up another bone meal system. Now, earlier, and the reason I'm building something just stupid big is because I want an insane amount of bone meal. Um, but that bone meal from the seeds, that was roughly a barrel and a half of seeds earlier. And from that, we got 11, 12, 12 bone blocks. So as you can see, the seeds are not very efficient. And even if I'm through here harvesting and doing that all of the time, nonstop, I'm never going to have enough for my own personal needs. Um, really, this is a beginner series, <laughs> and this is probably not a beginner's build. It's simple enough to be. Uh, the sheer quantity of materials here, though, is a little bit on the... Mm, a lot of people probably don't want to deal with it side. So I extended this out. I decided on 40 lawn instead of 30, um, partially because I think the aesthetic I can get on a longer, skinnier building like that is going to be better. Um, but it's 20 wide, it's 40 lawn, so that's 800 blocks. So that's 800 blocks of my deep slate uh, bricks here. And <clears throat> that's 800 minus, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. So 120, 120 powered rails. And that gives us 680 of these regular rails. Um, the resources required for that, and oh, it's a little bit slow. I'm going to have to find a way to boost that just a little bit. Um, and I think I can, if I remember Minecraft physics, do that by adding another powered rail. And you'll see these are just automatically powering. Um, as long as I have one power source, that's connecting, I think it's up to 15 rails, if I remember correctly. Um, you'll power the whole branch. But anyway, um, if my Minecraft physics are remembered correctly, that should give me a little more speed and power on that back curve there. Um, if not, I can put in some stuff to give it a nudge every now and then. That, well, that's for another time if it ever comes up. But anyway, so the resources required for this, uh, the iron, uh, powered rails require gold and redstone. Uh, sticks, I have sticks for days. Uh, I've got my little tree farm we talked about earlier going on up there. Um, so that's not really that big of a deal. But really, um, even just one back and forth slice of this should be more than enough for most people's needs. Now, this is going to have an advantage, though, later down the line. Once I have all of the bone meal I want, and I might even put in a switch so that I can change it from bone meal to collecting my items. Um, the melon and pumpkins will give me some items for villager trading. Uh, I can't remember if they directly trade for sugarcane, but I know some of them trade for paper, which you can make out of sugarcane. And I'm not aware of anything with bamboo off the top of my head, although I'd have to look at the villager trade tables to be absolutely positive about that. 
But anyway, with that, um, the collection system is in place, and it's starting to take longer than I had originally anticipated. So, word to the wise, uh, which obviously I am not. Um, if you're going to plan something of this scale, make sure you give yourself enough time to really uh, accomplish it, right? And since I've set a goal for myself of a video every day, I'm starting to look at the time and how much I've invested into this, trying to get the slime balls and everything. I know right now that I am not going to get everything done. Um, I'm going to try and have the pumpkins and melons up um, fully. If I don't have them fully, I'm going to have them at least partially done. Um, and then I'll have, let's see, some dirt right here. Yeah, lots of dirt. Good dirt. Um, you know, the start for the sugarcane layer and the bamboo layer, um, which, well, I might not have the start actually. Because for each layer that I'm putting in with the system I'm planning to do... Yeah, you came to a stop. No, no, no. Okay, I'll have to figure out just a little more info for you. Um, no. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to rebuild this platform. <laughs> every single time. I don't even think I have the resources for it. So this is going to be a long term, probably finished in like a week, week and a half kind of build. Um, I'm going to be doing other stuff while I'm going about it though. So I'm going to get what I can going and then I'm going to set it aside for a little bit and come back and forth a little bit here and there. And this will be a slow effort over a long time kind of build. Um, if I was going to do this again, you know, in a similar type fashion, I would have some other infrastructure in place already, such as an iron farm, gold farm, things like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, slime farm. Definitely need a slime farm for uh, the flying machines that we're going to use. But anyway, with that, I'm going to keep on cracking. I'm going to try and get this pumpkin and melon situation set, set up. And we will join back up for our final clip once we see how far I got. All right, still cracking away at what's going to be the last update for this video. Um, I don't actually have enough pumpkin or melon to actually plant this farm. And I knew that as I was starting. Um, I plan to actually use this farm to... Uh, collect the remainder of the melon and pumpkin that I need. Let's see. There we go. So the way this farm's actually going to work, though, and something I want to show you, uh, we'll get just a little bit of this done, is I'm placing, right now, pistons on top. Ooh, I'm placing pistons in the wrong place, actually. Hold on. They're supposed to go on the other part of this. Um, so, here we go. When pumpkins and melons grow, they're going to grow into one of the four spaces around them. Okay. And when they do, I'm going to set up an observer on top of these that will see the stem update. And when it updates... It will uh, fire a signal into my pistons, which will then crush the pumpkin or melon. And um, it'll be sitting on the floor for a minute while my collection system's going around and going to pick it up. And I did get that fixed, by the way. I'll show you that here in just a moment. But anyway, we're going to go back and forth. Uh, I've got some glowstone here. There's going to be a little bit of random glowstone throughout this entire thing to make sure there's enough light for the crops to grow. But let's see. Let's do one more row. And I'm not sure if there's an easier way to get this started. Um, this is going to be a long, tedious process, as you can see, um, in getting these placed because it takes a little bit of finesse. 
All right, so that's kind of one quad. Um, so like three rows of this is more than enough for pretty much any reasonable person. Um, so the next thing we're going to need is actually our uh, cobblestone there and some nether quartz. We can come over to our crafting table. Oh, and some redstone. Right. Can't forget the redstone. Let's get rid of that spider eye. All right, there we go. So then we're going to have observers. And we'll just make a few of them up real quick. Now I'm going to come up and remove what's above here because of the direction that observers place in. And let's see, where's my... Did I put my scaffolding in the chest? Oh, look at me, all professionally disorganized. There we go. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's just go right here. All right, so I've got three rows of this um, already uh, pistoned out. So I can take off these first three rows. I'm doing it from back here. Oh, I just lied. I was going to say I should be far enough away. I'm not going to pop off any pistons. So I don't have to be as careful. Apparently I'm a liar. That's fine. All right. So I'm going to place my observers anywhere that there's a stem right now and you can see those um and i'll just come over to the edge i'll look right down at the edge of this guy and i'll place one and I, what i want is the dot up right two and we'll just get this all done here all right there we go and we can well i guess i don't even have to Worry about my... Oh, that's because there's not a hopper in there. <laughs> I was about to be very concerned. All right. Um, so now I need... Yeah, redstone dust. And I'll put redstone dust on top of each of the observers that I just placed. When I do that, um, that will cause it so that the air blocks around the observers are going to... Yeah, see, fire like that, and that'll fire my pistons, which gets everything going. Um, and that'll continue to grow things for me. And the uh, minecart, I need to put a hopper in it still. Um, should actually collect everything. But I'm going to go ahead, grab the rest of this, collect it up. I'm going to keep chucking away, but this is the way this system's going to work, and it's going to go for all 800 blocks that we have going on here. Um, so I'm going to get this finished up off camera while I go ahead and finish editing the video. Um, and in the next video, I will tell you how much this thing is producing and how far we've gotten with the planting process. Now, as for my fix on my minecart, um, I've got a block with a switch here. I just put a powered rail <laughs> in the middle here. I was concerned that wouldn't work uh, because when you power a hopper, it'll actually lock it which will keep it from um, uh, picking up items. So that was a mild concern. But anyway, it has been fantastic, real great and fun. Um, obviously, I bit off more than I could chew today. So this is going to be a work in progress. By the time this is done, this is going to be just ginormously tall. And it is going to be amazing. I'm going to have all of the bone meal all of the time. In fact, I'm going to have too much, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But with that, I really appreciate you taking the time to show up, watch the videos, uh, enjoy them and everything like that. And, you know, I really hope to see you tomorrow in our next video. One last D detail that I forgot to mention with this. Um, the thing that makes this work, you have to have water for crops. So these are actually stairs that have been put in, and in Minecraft, you can waterlog them. So now that they're in, I'm just going down, grabbing a bucket, uh, 
Let's see. Oh, and there's our farm working. Excellent. Excellent. So a couple of buckets of water. Running back up. And it really is as simple as uh, right-clicking on them. So boop, boop, and done. Then I throw a piece of glowstone on top to give the crops the light they need. Uh, you can see some of our crops are already starting to grow. I've already gotten a couple of little harvests out of it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to keep chucking on. Hopefully have this whole thing planted up to begin that next episode. Ha! Ah, I did it!